everyone, I'm Pearl and I'm very lucky today to be able to ask Lorna some really interesting and inspiring questions for you all. So one thing that's asked very often is about God. And there's so many different names for God, like, or what people consider God. It's not always necessarily the word God. It could be their higher power or they could be from various different religions and have different names for God. But they believe in something that is bigger than themselves. Well, the, the way I would answer that question is, you know, they are believing in something that is bigger than themselves and that's God. And we call God by so many different names. And in one sense, um, lots of us, you know, were grasping onto that part of us, the spiritual part. And religion has played a huge part in that but yet has damaged um, us all spiritually as well. You know, that we are saying, well, I don't belong to any religion or, or I don't believe in God, but I believe in something else that is bigger than myself or bigger than the universe. But yet we're all referring to, to God. You know, we call God by so many different names you know as you said pearl there you know sometimes people will say you know the higher power or they will say i'm calling on the universe but you're calling on god spiritually because it is the spiritual part of you that you want to let free you want that soul that spark of light that god has given you you want it to step forward you're clinging in a sense to finding out who you are so so are you saying that or do you feel that it's our human self that creates these divisions by even putting a name i yes i i think so because there is so many divisions there between religion and and those that would say they're only spiritual um, and it's the human part that has put that there. But we've put it there because, you know, in a sense, we're, we're lost. And in a sense, we don't want to be ruled in, in that way. We want to believe freely in God. We want to believe that we do have a soul and that there are angels there and that our loved ones, when they die, you know, they go to heaven or, or to that special place in that in that way. So we're we're clinging on in, in a sense of, you know, well, if I say and I don't use the word God or I don't use the, lo the word Lord or or I don't use the word Jesus or, or I don't use the word Allah, you know, there's so many names for God. You know, sometimes we just call on God and say, please help me. You know, spiritually we say that. But one thing I do love, and that is, you know, I had, when I was writing um, the first book, Angels in My Hair, that was one thing that really kind of, you know, pulled at me. And, and I said to God, you know, what am I to call you? You know, what am I to call you? Because even myself not being able to read or anything but and being isolated in one sense here in Ireland and you know not hearing much of the outside world I already knew because God and the angels had already told me that there was such a big division in that way that people were starting to rise up and I just said to God well what will I call you and just what surprised me was God just said to me, Lorna, what do you call me? And I always remember being so surprised. And, and I said, God, of course, like, you know, that way. Why are you asking me? You should be telling me. Um, God, of course. And the, the thing is, God said, 
The word God is universal. It must have a deeper meaning to the word God than what we even realize. I think all of those words that we use for God, even when we're calling on the higher power, you know, or we're calling on the universe or, or we're calling on the light, whatever way we call, you know, to grasp, you know, spirituality, to look for that help spiritually that we want in our lives. It's all connected to God. It's, to me, you know, that day was kind of, in a sense, blew my mind when God turned around and said, you know, what do I call him? And God is neither male nor female. I think people struggle with having like blind faith. Um, like I've noticed myself even a lot of people, like they really want to have that divine experience. And nowadays they're the psychedelic kind of spiritual psychedelic craze maybe is starting. Um, and it's that people are really searching to connect divinitively. But yet their ego maybe stands in the way or their like expectation of what it should be. So mm -hmm. like is there like is there a way that we can create that connection or like, how can we see God as over and above and you not come together? Like, rather than we're creating all these divisions and my God's better than your God, God scenario. Yeah, yeah. Which is pointless if there's, if he's, re or if it's really the one God. It, it is just the one, the one God, you know, and... In all of what you've said there, Pearl, there's there's so many answers and so many questions in, in what, what you've said. And there is such a, a division. Um, and, and people in the world today are, you use the word, and I know it means, you know, taking something that will help to give them a vision, help them to believe in God, help them to believe in spirituality, help them to believe that they have have a soul um, and and people are are doing doing that because in a sense they're they're desperate to know that there's more to life that there is a meaning and a purpose for their life and the thing is there is so many meanings and purpose to every everyone's life but you don't need to take and I know lots of people will give out now when I say this. You don't need to take psychedelics. What, am I saying it properly? You don't, you don't need to. I think what has just happened is that, because I take nothing, you know, um, never have. But I think it is that people, in a sense, feel that God should stand in front of them right now, this very second. And the thing is, God does, and the angels do the very same. But we think we can, in a sense, turn it on like a TV screen and I see it instantly. But we don't give ourselves time. Even when people meditate, they don't allow their spiritual side, their soul, that spark of light of God to come forward. We're, in a sense, putting our human self forward. You know, we're, we're, not, we're not allowing the spiritual side and yet we're desperate to allow it. So we're looking for evidence and we're looking for proof. So we're, we're taking those psychedelics. And, and to me, you, you, don't, you don't need... It's, it's like long ago people had so many spiritual experiences all the time. A man or a woman could be crossing the mountain, could be going somewhere, but again, they were in nature. Again, they were one with everything around them. 
and they experience so, so much. And in a sense, we've lost that because we're rushing and even taking psychedelics, we're rushing. We want it to happen right now. But if, if that helps people in any way, I can't say no because that's their free will and their free choice whether they want to or not. But I would say you don't need to whatsoever. Like I think there's a place for it in some ways. Um, but I don't personally think it's an, for an everyday person to be doing. But yeah, exactly. Is it, is it like more that we have a fear that if we don't have this divine connection, like that when we die, we, there mightn't be anything? Like, or is it that we're that condition to having, like, especially in Western society, like if you want something generally, you can get it. Yeah, you, you like, can go into the supermarket yeah, and buy or it can, or the big store. Um, so is that a bit of it that we're, a lot of us fear having blind faith like we fear that if I don't have something if I don't see something or if I don't physically feel something that it's not there but the the thing is it is and I would say to you don't have blind faith don't or do see I'm dyslexic so the do and the don't don't quite go together for me so when I say blind faith for myself is I believe in God. I always yeah. have. Yeah. I don't need to have experiences to believe. Yes. So to me, I have blind, blind faith. Blind faith. And I, I think if everyone had blind faith, um, I think it would be much easier for us. But there's millions of people out there that, that don't. But even there is some that have blind faith but doubt. And, and in a sense, they have blind faith, but they, they, want, they want that proof, that experience. And yes, that proof and that experience has been given to us every single day. Like sometimes I'm kind of, you know, I, I don't understand why people um, don't realize that. Like we're sitting here. You know, we're, we're human beings, we're two women, and we have a soul, and I can see your guardian angel there with, your, with you. And but that's all the thing you can see that. I know. So for other people, but that's not the same because they can't see. see. But I, I know everyone will be able to see, but we kind of have to take that next step. And I think that's what's happening in the world today. You know, that's why people are taking psychedelics, um, because they want to take that next step. But I would say to you, how, how can I say, have that blind faith and don't doubt. And every step you take, know that it's your human body, your human self and your human mind that's taking that step. But your soul is taking that step with you. You know, if, if you can put in your mind, in, in a sense, well, maybe I could, if I say it this way, I know people will give, give out, but if you could say this spiritual being is is the image and the copy of you. And if you can, within your mind, your human self, every movement you make is not just a, a human movement. You have to allow your soul to move with your, your human body, you know, and allow it to step forward so that we don't have that. At the moment we have this, what would you say, separateness you know or division and we are striving so hard to to bring it together but it's like we're we are in a rush but we're tripping over ourselves 
and I just just one one thing especially for for myself and I guess I, I would just remind everyone and that is you know God taught me everything out of nature he didn't think teach me you know in a classroom it was in my everyday life every step I take you know I, I remember you know walking with Archangel Michael one day and he just saying to me you know I, I don't know what age I was I I was always out roaming in the fields or something like that or crossing a stream and and he told me to look down at my feet and I looked down at my feet and I remember smiling and laughing I'm even smiling and laughing now but I could see my soul foot because it was having the image of my human body and it moving with me and I thought this was so funny that I had said to the Archangel Michael you know well can can my soul foot I put it in a funny way to him you know hurt you know because sometimes maybe a little stick would scrape off my ankle because we didn't wear trousers then we were always in little dresses and I always remember Archangel Michael you know laughing at me and saying no Lorna your soul can feel no pain you know and I, I thought that was was lovely but we just need to make that connection to say to ourselves to have that blind faith not to doubt that I'm not just a human being I'm a spiritual being I'm both and allow the intertwining to happen and keep on going in search but I think you know, in your everyday life, if you could be conscious of it, you know, say to yourself or remind yourself every day as often as you can, I'm not just a, a human being drinking this cup of tea. My soul has lifted up this cup of tea with me, even though it's going, the liquid is going into my human body, but my soul is helping me doing this. It's doing everything I do as well. I, I, I know I could say loads more, but I, I don't know I what think that's a good questions. Start for, for a lot of people. So I know it's made me think of different things and some stuff in a different way as well. So I'm grateful for that. And I'd say our audience is very grateful as well. So I'm, I'm sure we'll come back to this subject again. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you, Pearl, for all your lovely questions. And I love to say thank you to you all and just remind you that um, I love you all. You are loved. If you ever say no one loves you, I love you. And I send you all my prayers, my love and my blessings. So thank you. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.